despicable me. I'm having a bad, bad day. If you take it personal, that's okay. Hello and welcome to the It Wasn't Me show. Tonight we'll be interviewing Bob the Minion. So, Bob, tell us a little bit about yourself. Eh, blah, 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 got it. Kevin and Stuart, blah, 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 blah. So, what do you think of Gru? Eh, blah, 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 blah. And what's your favorite part of your job? Eh, blah, eh, blah, 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 blah. And what's your favorite food? Banana, bapu. And um, who did you work for before Gru? Scarlet. Okay, and um, how long has the Minions been around for? Okay, um, well that's all for now. Thank you for watching. That's okay. Watch, this is so fun to see. Oh, despicable me. Why ask why better yet why not? Why are you marking X on that spot? Why use a blowtorch isn't that hot? Why Hello, I'm Angelica and today we will be having a spectacular presentation performance of us jazz ballad called Easy to Love by Cole Porter. Today performing we will have Marcus, Mucus, and the Martian. The Martian Zach on the stick, uh, Mucus Dutch on the clarinet, and Marcus will be on the keyboard. Enjoy. Okay. One, two, three, four. time on the smooth jazz hour. Does your toddler need comfortable and clean diapers? Then buy the Huggies pull-ups. These diapers are for, t for toddlers and are pull-ups, as I said, and you put them on like underwear or boxer shorts. Now here are reasons on why you should spend this mon your money on this product. One, it is clean and has no germs. Two, it does not let pee or poop leak. Three, it is comfortable for toddlers. Four, has no chemicals or toxins. Five, and finally, it has extra absorbent. We hope you buy this wonderful product and have a nice day.
Hi, to, I am today. My name is Hendon, and I will be interviewing Brian and Lily uh, from the Claymation Camp. And um, Ryan, so today, uh, Claymation, you guys did. Mm -hmm. um, what did you guys like make? And um, currently, right now, we are actually working on our um, final projects, which we've already finished. Um, I'm not sure what hers was, but mine, I was paired up with a guy named Brennan, and um, what we did was that we had a, we had this guy who was in a train, and this T-Rex thing um, destroys the train, so he climbs out, he walks around, and all of a sudden he gets chased through the camera with a, by a horde of zombies. So like, does, so it's like you guys film, film it, and then you have like, do you, like, what, um, for the train tracks, yeah. uh, what is it, like, um, little Legos, like, put together? Yeah, what we did is that... There's a big tub of Legos in the room that she and her um, partners work in. So we just took a bit of the, all the train bits that were in there. I made my own little train thing, and we just ran that around the track while we shot it at 24 frames per second. Oh, wow. And uh, Lily, so what did you guys make? So for our final project, um, me, Alyssa, and Sia, we um, made a whole bunch of Martians. And basically... So a human comes because she was trying to um, go out into space, not sure which planet, but um, she runs out of fuel, so she has to take a pit stop at Mars, and she meets all these Martians. Hold on, hold on. What's up? Okay. All right, keep going. <laughs> so um, after meeting the Martians, she gets scared, runs off, then they become friends, and... The Martian Queen gives her a bottle of fuel so she can go back. That's basically oh, the Oh, wow. End. How sweet. And, um, <laughs> so no one, no one really dies hmm. in there. Um, does, does she, like, does she, like, um, officially make it safe? Like, like where does it, like, start? Uh, so they're all, like, what, in a way, like, astronauts? With a rocket, they go into space and discover something. So it's a human that starts on Earth, um, becomes an astronaut, and trying to go to some planet. Okay, um, it's okay. Uh, it's nice to um, meet you guys and uh, knowing all this climation stuff. So um, yeah, thank you. So do you work out? <laughs> Because I don't. <laughs> We're finished. I don't care. I'm sure gonna bet ya I'm gonna win. I can slug that ball hard, and green can never stand a chance. I'm sure I'm gonna win because I'm the best at pitching and fielding. I won't even allow a run past me. Sluggo never is going to win. These two individuals are going to face off to see who will win the grand prize, a golden baseball trophy. And remember, strike one, strike two, strike three, you're out. And there will be one inning. Each inning will have one out, one, and one only. Green? Ha ha, I'm going to bat first. I'm so overconfident about that. They'll all go backward. They'll, I'm so overconfident about that. And I will never let you not allow me a run. The ball game will start now. Strike one. Oh. Inning over. That's the inning. Switch it up. Please don't swing, dummy. I don't want you to allow a home run. Please. Right? 
Yeah, home run. Scored and too bad about that. Well, that's the game, and if you two don't mind, let me hand out the grand prize. My name is Marcus and I'll be telling you guys about the next few days and what the weather will be like. First of all, tomorrow Wednesday's weather will be nice and partly cloudy. Thursday is the same and so is Friday. On Wednesday, the temperature will probably go up to 86 degrees or lower. On Thursday, the temperature will probably go up to 89 degrees. 89! Well, that's my weather report. Once again, Everybody, goodbye, and I hope you enjoy the forecast. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Are You Smarter Than an Intern? I am your host, Danielle, and today's teams are the Felt Hat Pirates, Scott and Marcus, and the Foam Fedoras, Jelly and Dutch. And um, today's categories will be first grade science, first grade health, second grade social studies, second grade world geography, third grade vocabulary, fourth grade math, fourth grade U.S. history, and fifth grade life science. The first question from first grade science is, how many horns did the Triceratops have on its head? Three. Three horns. Five points for Angelica's teams. Um, the next question is from first grade health. True or false, the esophagus is a passageway that connects the mouth <laughs> to the False. Yeah. What? It's true. Could you could you read the question again? It's false. Could you read the question? True. Um, true or false? The esophagus is a passageway passageway well, that connects the mouth to the nose. False. True. Um, another five points for Angelica's team. What? I got you, Nick. Um, no. The next question Sorry, from what? second grade social studies. I'm not According to the U.S. Constitution, the president is part of which branch of the U.S. government? Executive. Judicial. No, <laughs> no, it's still wrong. It's executive. executive. Not judicial. It's still wrong. It's executive. It's executive. 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 I already said that. I don't know what you say. It's wrong. 
being mean, but... Right? It's and yeah, another it's, five it's, points it's, for <laughs> Angelica's team. Okay. Okay. Um, the next question is from Second Grade World Geography. Which continent is the least populated? Antarctica. Yes, that's five <laughs> points for Marcus's team. Poop. I can read about it. I did. The next question is from Third Grade no. Vocabulary. The word you is what type of pronoun? A, first person <laughs> pronoun. Oh. B, second person pronoun, or C, third person pronoun? First. B. That is correct. Another five points for Angelica's team. The next question's from fourth grade math. Question is, if a car is traveling 40 miles per hour, how long does it take to drive 190 mi miles? How many miles? 190, but it's going 40. So oh, okay. Do I get a paper? <laughs> you have the answer or not? Oh. Someone get works. me a pencil. You can't ring the bell know. if you don't know the Mental answer. That's not how these bells this work. Why you come. Can you think in your head real quick? No. Wait, 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 no. What was the question again? No, you can't write people. You don't get to answer the question. How many times before going to 19? Oh! Three, four times. Yes. 40 hundred thousand. What? <laughs> I mean, wait. 40 hundred thousand. Four, wait. Number. Give that, give it to me oh. in terms of hours four and a half. Four and a half hours. 40 four times hours. 1,760. What? what? I'm not going to contribute to the math Please part. Please give me okay. the answer yeah. in hours eight, and minutes. Four is eight, and then another, okay. Four of them. Okay, read the question again. Just read the question Shh, again. 16, 10 hours. No. 16. If wait. 190, listen, right? Listen to the question. Yeah. Okay. 16. So it's going to take four hours and 40 minutes. No. Am I close? Can we you pass? are very close. Four hours. Five hours. Four hours and uh, 50 minutes. I know. Wait, four hours and 30 minutes. Five hours. No. Four hours and 30 minutes. No. Four, oh. hours and four, four, hours and, four hours and 25 minutes. No. Four hours and 35 minutes. No. Oh four God. hours four and 40 minutes. I no. just said that. Four hours and 45 minutes. Correct. Yes! No. <laughs> uh. oh my God. Okay. Our next question <laughs> is from fourth grade U.S. history. In which decade did James Marshall discover gold nuggets, gold nuggets sparking the famous California gold? 1848! 1848! Correct! Wow! Yes. Century. She said century. 1800s. You said century. Wasn't the question what century? What decade? 19th oh. century. What decade? Decade. Alright, 18. Oh. Okay, 30th. Well, Fine. he was more specific. Okay. Okay, our last question is fifth grade life science. By definition, an anemometer measures the speed of what? Oh, what? Okay, Mercury. what? Distance. No. No. no way. I didn't yeah, even go to that. Uh, an anemometer yeah. is like measuring the human body. No, no. it's the wind. Correct. Oh. See, I don't know anemometers. And let me see how many points you guys each have. <laughs> we have 30. 10. Angelica's <laughs> team has more yeah, points. Yeah. So, yeah. they win. The yeah. interns yeah. win. Are you no. smarter than an intern? No. Thank you, They're everybody. Not.
Hi, so today I'm interviewing two girls from Claymation, Sia and Alyssa, and today I'm going to be asking them some questions about how Claymation is like. So, um, uh, how much clay have you made so, like, how much clay figures have you made so far, like, this week? Um, we made a lot. Well, each, well, it varies. I made, Alyssa made maybe, like, three? I yeah, I, I didn't make that much because I was, like, messing around with the Legos more, but I made, made a lot. lot <laughs> maybe, like, seven or eight. Yeah. And I made, like, three. <laughs> So what, um, like how many Lego things have you made? Like Lego, um... Oh, um, I was mainly building like this Lego house thing for one of our um, animations, and yeah. I what made one house with the help of Alyssa. <laughs> so were you two like partners making like a film or something? Yeah, yeah. we were. We made one film together and then the uh, we made also a bunch of short videos, which we didn't do together. So can you tell me about like one of the videos or films? Tell about this. Um. Okay, so there's this one. It is about al aliens. Um, a human, which is a Lego, comes to a planet and then he, um, she meets some aliens. Oh, and... Um and then they become friends, basically, and that's the end. So, uh, what about the house, like, um, that you made? Oh, uh, that was another story about, like, this person living in a house, and then there's this, like, robber that comes along and steals their stuff, and then they chase the person, and, yeah. Then he gets caught and eaten by a dinosaur. So, um, is claymation, like, fun? Yeah, it's really fun. fun. Sometimes taking the pictures is tiring, but the finished product and making the figures is really fun. So yeah. to make like a, to make like a, um, like a film, do you like take multiple pictures and like um, bring it all together in like a film? Yeah, for maybe a twenty-second video, you'll have to take approximately two hundred and fifty pictures. Well, um, I love learning about um, claymation, and I um, hope you like it as well. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to our music premiere tonight. Uh, I have Dutch and the gang with me, and they will be performing P Mercy, Mercy, Mercy by Joe Zawinol. Today, we have Scott on the piano, Laura on the violin, Dutch on the clarinet, Annika on the flute, and Zach on the big stick. <laughs> so, please enjoy our show tonight.
joining us tonight with the premiere of Dutch and the Gang. See you next time. There's a big snake on the sidewalk and he's slithering. There's a big snake on the sidewalk and he's Hello and welcome to this uh, week's show where Hendon will be interviewing Cameron and his not fake pet snake, Jim. So Cameron, there there's this snake on your wrist and it's curled up. Is it like nervous that there's, cause there's a lot of people around it? Or is it like try to get like the body temperature right? Or um, is it like some, is it something like that? Oh, there, there could be a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, these snakes are arboreal, which means they live in trees. Um, and basically it's trying to cling on to my arm as an instinct because my arm is obviously off the ground um it's it's clinging there because uh it, it needs to stay up it doesn't want to fall um like any creature would um and also uh snakes are cold-blooded which means that they can't regulate their own body temperature like humans can so um the snake its name is jim um it has to move into the sun or out of the sun when it wants to change its temperature. So it may be huddling close to my arm, which is warm. It's a it's a normal body temperature um, because it wants to get uh, more warm because it's kind of cold in here. Also, and when it like so, I saw like before it did it curled up. It sort of like stuck its tongue out. I was like that. Yeah. Um, so is it like trying to sense food or sense something? When snakes stick their tongues out, it's like them smelling. Um, their their tongue is uh, almost like a nose. So when it when it's sticking its tongue out, it's trying to smell for things. It could be food. It could be it's smelling my hand, trying to identify it. Because um, I mean, it might not know that it's part of the rest of my body, and that I'm I mean, I guess alive. But uh, yeah, its its tongue is uh, its sense of smell. Um, also, like in the wild, what since you said the these kind of snakes they live in on trees. Yeah. What would be their um, like food and and like I, I'm guessing they would probably hide in the leaves if yeah. some kind of predator came. So, but what would be their food? Because you feed them live mice. Yeah. Because it's your pet. But then, what would they do in the wild? Well, in the wild, generally, um, it's live rodents. Obviously, they um, they won't normally eat something that's already dead because they generally, uh, they don't move a around a whole lot. Um, the reasons mm. they do move is because of they want to change their temperature or um, if they're trying to get live food, uh, they're ambush predators, which means that they'll lie in wait uh, for food to come and then they'll strike, they'll wrap around it and constrict it um, and that'll basically suffocate it. And once it's dead, they'll unhinge their jaw down there um, and that'll allow them to actually swallow the food and it'll travel down their body. Their body's basically a long intestine. Um, and then uh, after they've digested it, it will be uh, pooped out as refuse. Um, yeah, and in the wild, it would be rodents, uh, mice, rats, any kind of small mammals like that. Um, yeah. Will it like, other than like, will it eat like, um, like eggs? Yeah. Like from a nest? Uh, they will eat eggs from, uh, say, say, a bird's nest. Uh, they'll travel up the tree. They'll swallow those whole as well. The, um, their muscles will crack the shells, and they'll just uh, take in the nutrients. Uh, and um, how, like, right now, since it's wrapped around you, yeah. can, uh, how is it, like, really tight right now? It's not too tight. Um, it's, it's trying to stay on, but it doesn't have to be too particularly tight because it's wrapped around in several coils. Um, it's not uncomfortable. Okay, and so, but then in the wild or like if it's scared, it can like wrap tighter, right? Yeah, uh, many arboreal snakes do this. Um, it could wrap tighter if it felt the need to, but that requires strength. Um, and it, it's just not really worth it. It knows it's safe. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, I, uh, yeah, I think that's all the questions I've got. Um, all right. Yeah. Well, that was very interesting. And to all those watching back at home, no worries, no humans or animals were hurt while filming this. Thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Snake on the sidewalk, and he's slithering. There's 
There's a big snake on the sidewalk, and he's slithering.